Welcome to this video on spot diagnosis. You will see 30 clinical images, each displayed for 10 seconds. During this time, observe the key features and try to make a diagnosis. After 10 seconds, the correct diagnosis and its relevant characteristics will be revealed. By the end of this video, you'll be better prepared for spot diagnosis in both clinical practice and exams. Let's begin. This is myxedematous, or torpid facies, characterized by expressionless face and apathetic look. The face is puffy with periorbital swelling, baggy eyelids and loss of outer one-third of the eyebrows. You may see xanthalasmas. Patient's skin is cool and dry, and there may be malar flush. This is another example of the myxedema facies. This is thyrotoxic facies, seen in thyrotoxicosis. Patient will appear anxious, restless, and fidgety. There may be unilateral or bilateral protosis, and thyroid gland may be diffusely enlarged. This is a typical appearance of cretinism, seen in congenital hypothyroidism. The result is intellectual disability and distinctive facial features as can be seen in picture. There is coarse skin with thick lips and large ears. This is typical Cushingid facies. Notice the rounded, plethoric face giving rise to moon face appearance. There is also hirsutism and acne. You are seeing acromegaly in this slide. There are coarse facial features with prominent supraorbital ridges. There is increased wrinkling of the forehead. Jaw is protruded forward, which is known as prognathism. Nose, lips, and ears are large. This is dermatomyositis, and you are shown the heliotrope rash. Heliotrope rash is a purplish or lilac-colored rash, but it may also be red. It can occur around the eyes with associated swelling, but may be found on the upper chest or back, what is called the shawl sign or v-sign. Rash may also occur on the face, upper arms, thighs, or hands. This is SLE rash, which is a photosensitive rash over both cheeks and bridge of the nose, and popularly known as butterfly rash. This is the slide of systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. Skin is smooth, 
shiny and tight with hypo and hyperpigmented areas. The nose appears pinched up and tapered. There is loss of the forehead wrinkling. Lips are thin, pursed with puckered skin around mouth. Mouth orifice is small which is called microstonia. What you see here is thalassemic facies. Notice expanded globular maxillae, due to bone marrow expansion into facial bones, combined with prominent epicanthal folds and frontal bossing. This appearance is also called chipmunk facies. Here you see Parkinsonian facies. There is mask-like, expressionless face, with absent or reduced blinking of eyes. The look is staring and vacant, and in some patients, there is dribbling of saliva. Weakness of upward gaze, seborrhea and sweatiness are some of the other features. This is myotonia dystrophic, and the appearance is myopathic facies, characterized by frontal baldness, bilateral ptosis, long, lean, triangular, sad and expressionless face, with wasting of temporalis and mesiters. These children are having trisomy 21. Notice flat appearing face, small head, flat bridge of the nose, smaller than normal, low set nose, small mouth which causes the tongue to stick out and to appear overly large. See also upward slanting eyes, epicanthal fold, rounded cheeks, and small misshapen ears. This is myasthenic facies, typical of myasthenia gravis, also known as snarling facies. It is characterized by ptosis, which is usually bilateral. There is drooping of corners of the mouth and weakness of the facial muscles. There is usually frontalis overactivity to compensate for ptosis. This is typical appearance in Turner syndrome. There is short and webbed neck, low hairline and redundant skiff fold on the back of the neck, small lower jaw called micronathia. Mouth is small, and ears are low set and deformed. This is Marfanin facies, and Marfan syndrome. Face is long, lean, and elongated. There is a small jaw, leading to crowding of teeth. The palate is high arched. This is mitral facies of mitral valve stenosis. Observe malar flush, rosy flush cheeks and dilated capillaries. This is the appearance of nephrotic syndrome. 
face is puffy and there is gross periorbital swelling. The lesion shown here is lupus perneal. This is seen in sarcoidosis patients. Lupus perneal is a chronic raised indurated, hardened lesion of the skin, often purplish in color. This is seen on the nose, ears, cheeks, lips, and forehead. This is left-sided Bell's palsy. Their loss of wrinkling on the forehead and nasolabial fold on the affected side. This is leonine facies. It is seen in Lepromatus lepri. The skin of the face and forehead becomes thick and corrugated. Multiple nodules of variable sizes and shapes present on ear lobules, face and nose. This is achondropasia, characterized by short stature and large head size. This is port wine stain seen in Sturgeweber syndrome. This is typical head appearance of Paget's disease of bone, characterized by large cranium and forehead. This is the picture of hepatic facies. There is muddy or pigmented discoloration, pinched face, sunken eyes, prominent malar bones, and there is temporalis muscle wasting as well. The appearance is due to the obstruction of superior vena cava. There is puffy, edematous and plethoric face, with congested conjunctival vessels. Neck veins engorged and non-pulsatile, and veins on chest also become prominent. This appearance is known as Hippocratic facies. It is seen in advanced peritonitis and terminal illnesses. It is characterized by pinched nose, sunken eyes, collapsed temples, clammy forehead, and crusting on lips. There is bilateral parotid gland swelling here. It is seen in various conditions. Few common examples are mumps, sarcoidosis, Schrenner's syndrome, amyloidosis, hypothyroidism, and alcoholism. This is called adenid facies and these features develop in children with adenoid gland swelling, which causes difficulty in nasal breathing, and resultant there is mouth breathing. The face appears long and mouth is open.
This discoloration is due to a meodoron use. It is a deep blue discoloration around malar area and nose. And this is erythema multiforme. It is characterized by raised, erythematous, target-shaped lesions on skin. The lesions may also occur on mucous membranes in more severe cases. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you have found it useful. If so, please like this video and share it with your colleagues. Comment below if you need this presentation for your personal use.